Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Felicia and today I am not in the studio. They're doing some works outside. There's no electricity in my house today and every single room in my house besides this one sounds like there's a truck inside. So we're in here today right next to my lovely bookshelf. Today's video is also not a camera tutorial. It's not a review. It's not anything I usually do, but it is something that is quite close to my heart because it kind of affects me. And I wanted to talk about mental health and how to handle things when you're a freelancer or when you work in the film industry. Because in this sort of industry, it is very easy to hide mental health issues. I actually have generalized anxiety and mild depression. This sort of thing sort of sits in the back of my mind. It's kind of like a looming cloud that never really quite gets there but it still sort of affects me and every time it does get there it's usually triggered by something that has happened in that day. So yes I have experienced panic attacks and things of that nature, I have experienced depression and I do still have that but I'm one of those people that you would classify as a high functioning person so I am able to for a lack of a better word just hide it better. It doesn't mean that I don't experience the same level as somebody who can't hide it. It just means that I actually can function while having it, which I guess in a way is good, but also it still kind of says that I can handle it better or I'm not experiencing it as bad, which is wrong. It's the wrong assumption. Anyway, this video is not about actually fixing those problems. I wanted to chat about things that you could do in your day-to-day -day life to kind of help you get through that. Especially if you're a freelancer, you're working for yourself, or you're working in an industry where you are working back-to-back -back jobs. One thing I wanted to talk about is that it is really important to take breaks from your work. Try taking a few days off and do absolutely nothing. Do something that you love instead, even if you love your job, which I love my job, but there are other things that are different to my job that I could be doing. Also consider that you don't need to say yes to every single job that comes along. In fact, I've worked that one out the hard way, so you don't have to. But seriously, you'll know when enough is enough and when you need to start saying no to certain jobs. And if you're still struggling, there are a couple of questions you can ask yourself, which I'm pretty sure I mentioned in another video, but still I'll tell you again here because it is a very important thing to think about regardless of whether you're thinking about your mental health. This sort of goes for every single job that comes your way. Number one, is it paid? Number two, if it is paid, can you afford not taking it? And number three, if it isn't paid, what are you getting out of it in return? Because if you're not getting something out of it, you're not working with somebody new, you're not making a new contact, you're not getting something for your real, like what is the point of you doing that job? And only you can answer that. You do what's best for you. And nobody's gonna think any different if you don't take a job. Basically, there's no point in doing something or pressuring yourself to do something that you don't necessarily want to do. Hi. I'm trying to film an important video. Thank you. So yeah, it is really important to take a break for yourself and work out which jobs are most important to you. Similarly, if you've put yourself on a job and you realize that your mental health may impede your ability to do that job in a severe way, I'd recommend having a strong think about whether you actually do need to do that job. And you also have the option to cancel. Now, obviously don't do this last minute because that's a really poor thing to do to the production team, but at least help them try and find somebody who can cover you. Just realize that you don't need to be trapped. If you don't want to do the job, don't do it. But what about when you don't have any work? And being in the freelance industry, that kind of happens quite a lot. You have a lot of down periods where you just don't have any work and you're sitting around at home really doing nothing. This is something I struggle with, so I hope that all of my advice in this video doesn't come across as hypocritical. You just need to find other activities that make you happy, some sort of hobby that is completely different to what you do in your job, allowing you to take some time out. I'm looking at a few different creative things because I love the creative process and I can't stand being trapped in something that isn't creative for a long period of time. So creative things are my jam. The last thing I wanted to talk about is self-motivation. Yeah, it's okay to be laid back. Yes, it's okay to sleep in, but try to keep the fundamentals on a roll. Try to wake up at a reasonable hour, eat breakfast, go for a walk, do things that are outside your house. I know it seems silly, but 
it really does help and you'll be surprised. And finally, to help you act on that, you can use something called the countdown method. A few weeks back, I saw a TED talk which was about self-motivation. Pretty much, the lady was talking about using a countdown method to get her to do things. She was at a point in her life where things weren't going so well and she was lacking the motivation to do even the most basic things like taking her kids to school. She kind of just gave up. She was always saying things like, tomorrow will be the day where I fix everything up, but tomorrow just never was the day. But then after some realization, she began to utilize this method called the countdown method. Or I believe it's called the countdown method. I'll find the TED talk and I'll link it below and you can take a look. She began using a simple countdown. Something as simple as five, four, three, two, one. And this method is something I'm gonna start using as of today. So if that is something that you are interested in doing as well and you'd maybe like to keep in touch, leave a comment down below because I'd love to kind of do it with other people and see how other people fare while they're using that method. Also, as I said, I'll link that TED talk down below so you can actually watch the whole thing. It's incredibly interesting, but having said that, which TED talk isn't interesting. So thank you very much for watching this video. I really do hope that you got something out of it today. I, I know it's really different to what I usually do, but it is something that is very important to me. So I hope it is as important to you as it is to me. If you did enjoy this video, please remember to give it a big fat thumbs up. And if you would like to see more of my face, learn a little bit more about filmmaking in the process and maybe occasionally talk about mental health, remember to subscribe and I'll see you next Sunday.